Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Learning with Chrono. Today will be the start of a series covering the Buildcraft Power Unit, the Minecraft Jewel, or more specifically how to produce the Minecraft Jewel. And that is done through the Buildcraft compatible engines. And as we can see here, there's a bunch of them. We have the Buildcraft default engines, we have thermal expansion engines, and this neat little thing, which isn't really an engine, it's more like a battery that stores the Minecraft jewels. We have three forestry engines, which are considered to be good starter engines. We have the railcraft engines, which for me personally, I usually start with a hobbyist steam engine. And then we have the Red Power Blue Electric Engine. All Buildcraft compatible engines work in similar ways. They require a fuel source, in this case some kind of solid burnable fuel. They require a redstone signal to tell them when to activate. And they require something to output the power into, either a Buildcraft compatible device directly or into wooden pipes. Now there are three different wooden pipes. The conductive wooden pipe is designed to transport the power that's outputted from the engine somewhere else. This combined with the other conductive pipes, the cobblestone, the stone, the gold conductive pipes, can take m many Buildcraft engines and funnel all of their power into one thing. There is the regular wooden pipe, which is designed to transport items from one place to another. And then there is the wooden waterproof pipe, which is designed to conduct f liquids, uh, lava, fuel, oil, water, that kind of thing, from one place to another. Somewhat like the items, except in liquid form. Now, all these engines can be rotated using the wrench. This is the Buildcraft wrench, or you can use the Railcraft wrench. They are both compatible. Except for one engine, and that is the Blue Electric engine. It requires a screwdriver to turn. And all you have to do is just right-click on the engine, and it will actually flip between the different types of put or outputs that it can go through. So for this engine right now, all we have to do is put fuel in the engine and then give it a redstone signal and it starts pumping. Now, all engines have a drawback. They have the potential to overheat, causing them to either shut down or explode. Again, the exception seems to be the red power blue electric engine. So if an engine is not outputting enough power, is not outputting as much power as it generates, it can potentially overheat and either shut down in the case of some engines or explode in the case of others. For example, if I get rid of all of these pipes, we can see that it stops pumping, but we can also see that it's still burning fuel. And if I let this sit for long enough, even we can even see the particles of it doing its thing as it's overheating. If I let this sit for long enough, it will explode, being a default Buildcraft engine. The engines that won't explode, for example, are like the electric engine. It will overheat and shut down. But we'll get into the details of what each individual engine does later on in the series. For now, let's see if this engine truly does explode.
and there we have it an explosion with the power of a block of dynamite oh and we can see that it did not actually destroy the engine which is unusual i thought it did we could definitely see why we wouldn't want this to happen we wouldn't want our engines exploding destroying our machines now note just because the engine is pumping does not mean that it's safe it can explode even if you are outputting power you have to make sure that you're outputting all of your power or that the engine has proper coolant if it can do that for example the combustion engine requires some form of coolant now let's see if we can put some of this power to use here we have two chests one has a little bit of cobblestone in it something that's very common inside of minecraft the other is empty say for some reason you would need to transport this cobble from over here into that chest well, we could do it manually, but say something's inputting the cobblestone into here, well, we would have to keep doing it manually. Well, to get around that, all we would need is an engine, a wooden pipe, and then an extension, which would be the cobblestone or stone transport pipes in this case. Uh, this can also be done with liquids, with their respective waterproof piping. So we just have to put down our engine and we can see that it automatically moves to connect, which is exactly what we want. We put down our redstone signal. We give this little bit of power and then we turn it on. We can see that it is transporting the cobblestone, even though I'm having a small graphical glitch and it's not actually showing the cobblestone in the wooden pipe. But I think that's something that's up with Optifine, not with Minecraft itself. If you see this, like I said, it's just a graphical glitch. It's not actually a problem with Buildcraft. So we can see that it's transporting all of these into here. Uh... A bit at a time each engine will be able to transport a different amount of blocks in one push uh, the sterling engine seems to want to be able to push 52 blocks at a time but it's not constantly pushing 52 blocks at a time because it wants to pull a stack and for it to pull 52 each time it would have to actually separate out stacks and that would be confusing. So it's just pulling 52 and then the 12 that's left over and then another 52 and then the 12 and so on and so forth. A combustion engine, for example, will be able to pull an entire stack of 64 at one time through the pipe. Now, in this situation, it's pretty safe. I think it's physically possible for a Stirling engine to overheat and explode in this situation. But honestly, I've let it run for days on end and never seen it. But be careful. As we saw in the fast forward, these things will change color to let you know how hot they are. What the colors are and what they mean varies from engine to engine. But in general, red equals bad. It is near catastrophic failure. So let's turn that off just to be safe. Now another use of an engine is to run a buildcraft compatible device. For example, this quarry. Now, quarries are fun because they're an easy way to get materials. So we can imagine that we would want to use this. And we could also imagine that we want to use this as fast as possible. One sterling engine, one combustion engine, does not output enough power to run a quarry at full speed. So we can plunk down a few, but because of the way the quarry works, 
we're limited to how many we can connect directly to the quarry. Uh, we have to have the output on the top, so that leaves us with four, because the fifth side here is taken up by the quarry itself. So we have the three on the side here and one on the bottom. Now, this will work. We can run this quarry like this. It'll work, it'll work fine. But if we want to make it faster, we can put in the conductive pipes. Now, conductive pipes might be a little confusing. One would think that we would take the wooden conductive pipe and attach it to the quarry directly, but that's not the case. Remember, a wooden pipe is designed to pull things from its source. In this case, when we're transporting power, the source is the engine itself. So the conductive pipes will actually go where we're placing the engines. So for example, if I want five engines, I would just set it up like this. Now we see something that's interesting, something else that these engines can do. They can power themselves. So like this engine is taking all its power and transforming, transporting it to this engine. And this engine is transporting it to this engine and this engine up to this engine. And then all that power is going to wherever this engine is outputting. Now, this is a real quick way to make things explode because it's very hard for the end engine to actually output all that power. In fact, I don't think it's physically possible. It is, however, a good way to get the engine up to speed because the hotter an engine runs, the more efficient it is. But of course, the more efficient it is, the closer it is to catastrophic failure. So one has to balance your risks. To change this in these situations, you just, again, use your wrench until it's pointing at the wooden pipes like we want. And then we use our stone or cobblestone or gold conductive pipes and connect all our pipes together and into our quarry. Now, all of these engines will be outputting power through these pipes and into the quarry. So what I can do is set both of these up so that I'll flip one lever, turn all of them on at once, and then we can see the difference side by side. So now we have this simple test set up with three engines on this quarry, five engines on this quarry, they're both the same exact size. They both have the same number of repeaters between the redstone signal and the engines themselves. Yes, there are more repeaters on this side, but because of how redstone signal works, it doesn't matter. They will all turn on at the exact same time. So if I flip this switch, we can start to see our tests. And we can already see that this side is significantly faster than the other side. And we only have two engines different here. So I hope this little video has given you a useful insight into the basics of Buildcraft Power. In the next video, I will be going into depth about each of the, one of these engines, explaining how to make them work, how much power they output, and really what they're good for. So stay tuned, and as always, I will say, keep playing the game, and have fun.